Welcome to a lesson on building and generating functions for sequences. In the last lesson, we learned the generating function for the sequence 1, 1, 1 half, 1 sixth, 1 24th, and so on, is e to the power of x. The e to the power of x example is very specific, and we have a rather odd sequence. And the only reason we know it's generating function is because we happen to know from calculus the Taylor series for e to the x. Our goal now is to gather some tools to build generating functions of a particular given sequence. Let's see what the generating functions are for some very simple sequences. The simplest of all would be a sequence of ones. What does a generating series look like? It is simply one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. Notice all the coefficients are one. Now the question is can we find a closed formula for this power series? And the answer is yes. This particular series is really just a geometric series with the common ratio x. Notice as we progress through the terms in the series, we multiply the previous term by x to get the next term. Because of this, we can use the multiply, shift, and subtract technique from section 2.2, where we set the given series equal to s. Next, we multiply both sides of the equation by x, shift the right side to the right, and then subtract the two equations. So first we have s equals the series one plus x plus x squared and so on. Multiplying both sides by x, we have x times s on the left. On the right we have one times x, which is x, x times x, which is x squared, x times x squared, which is x cubed, and so on. And notice the product is shifted to the right. And now we subtract. If we factor s out of s minus xs, we have the quantity one minus x times s equals, on the right, everything simplifies out when subtracting, except the one. Dividing both sides by s, we have the generating function for a sequence of ones, which is one divided by the quantity one minus x. Another approach to determine this generating function would be to remember from either algebra or calculus that if we have an infinite geometric series where the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, the infinite sum is a sub zero, the first term, divided by the quantity one minus r. And for our series, we have a sub zero equals one and r equals x. Using the same formula, we have one divided by the quantity one minus x. Either way, we now know the generating function for a sequence of ones is one divided by the quantity one minus x. Now this is really only true when the absolute value of x is less than one, but we really don't care. We are never going to plug anything in for x, so as long as there is some value of x for which a generating function and generating series agree, we are happy, and we are. Now that we have a generating function for a sequence of ones, we can use this generating function to determine additional generating functions for different sequences. For example, if we replace x with three x, we have one divided by the quantity one minus three x equals one plus the first power of three x plus the square of three x plus the cube of three x and so on. Simplifying, we get the generating series one plus three x plus nine x squared plus 27 x cubed plus dot 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 which generates the sequence one, three, nine, 27, and so on. So now we know the generating function for the sequence is one divided by the quantity one minus three x. So as we discover more and more generating functions, we do wanna keep a list of them for future reference. By replacing the x in one divided by the quantity one minus x, we can get generating functions for a variety of sequences, but not all. For example, we cannot plug in anything for x to get the generating function for a sequence of twos, However, we are not lost yet. Notice that each term of the sequence of twos is a result of multiplying the terms of the sequence of ones by the constant two. So we multiply the generating function for the sequence of ones by two, which gives us two times one divided by the quantity one minus x, which simplifies to two divided by the quantity one minus x, which is a generating function for a sequence of twos. Similarly, we can find the generating function for the sequence three, nine, 27, 81, and so on. If we notice that this sequence is simply multiplying the sequence of one, three, nine, 27, and so on by three, and we know the generating function for one, three, nine, 27, and so on is one divided by the quantity one minus three x. So if we take this generating function and multiply by three, which is the same as multiplying the generating series by three, we do get the generating function for the sequence three, nine, 27, 81, and so on.
What about the sequence 2, 4, 10, 28, 82, dot, dot, dot? Here the terms are one more than the powers of 3. That is, we have added the sequence of 1s and the sequence 1, 3, 9, 27, term by term. Therefore, we can get the generating function for the new sequence by adding the respective generating functions. And the generating function for a sequence of 1s is 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus x. And the generating function for 1, 3, 9, 27, dot, 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 is 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus 3x. The sum of these two generating functions is a generating function for 2, 4, 10, 28, 82, dot, dot, dot. The fun does not stop there. If we replace x in the original generating function for the sequence of 1's, we have 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus the square of x. Replacing x with x squared in the generating series, we have 1 plus the first power of x squared plus the square of x squared plus the cube of x squared plus dot, 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 which if we simplify, gives us one divided by the quantity one minus x squared equals one plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth dot dot dot. Recall we need to think of this as one plus zero x plus one x squared plus a zero x cubed plus one x to the fourth and so on. This generates a sequence one zero one zero one zero dot dot dot. Here's a sneaky one. What happens if we take the derivative of one divided by the quantity one minus x? I've shown the derivative here in blue below. We get the function one divided by the square of one minus x. To find the generating series, we simply take the derivative of the generating series for the sequence of ones, which is the derivative of one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. The derivative of one is zero. We can drop that term. The derivative of x is one. The derivative of x squared is two x. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, etc. The generating series is 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, which generates the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The generating function for the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on is 1 divided by the square of 1 minus x. If we take it a step further and find the second derivative, which is a derivative of 1 divided by the square of 1 minus x, I'll let you check this, it does come out to two divided by the cube of one minus x. To find the terms of the series, we would find the derivatives of the derivatives, which would be the derivatives of the terms shown here, one plus two x plus three x squared plus four x cubed, which gives us zero plus two x plus six x plus 12 x squared and so on. Notice all the coefficients are even, so if we multiplied both sides of the equation by one half, we would have one divided by the cube of one minus x equals one plus three x plus six x squared plus 10 x cubed and so on, which generates the sequence one, three, six, 10, dot, dot, dot. And notice these are the triangular numbers, though in this case we have a sub zero equals one, and typically for the triangular numbers, we have t sub zero equals zero. As we determine more and more generating functions, it will be helpful to keep a list of generating functions for various sequences. Here's what we have so far. The only one I left off here, the only one I left off here was a generating function in which we added two generating functions to get a new generating function. I hope you found this helpful.